Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to the Anime Talk, the show where we ask, are sequels always needed? Are they sometimes unneeded? You know, it's it's a question I think everyone needs to ask once in a while. Now, I know a lot of people are, right now aren't doing this on the YouTube and the anime community in general talking about, of course, Code Geass Season 3, quote unquote. And people are going off on it. You know, there's billions of videos already being made about this. I'm not focusing on that because it's not just like oh i'm gonna get some views from going off of kogi no i'm not doing that at all i want to talk about something that i think recently has become a bigger and bigger topic and we've talked about this several times on the podcast that i'm part of otako a team definitely check that out the link will be in the description box below but you know with sequels i feel like people are really definitely mixed with it you know it's in general sequels are already a double-edged sword and i'll get into explaining why that is but in general People have very, very mixed opinions with sequels. Now, let's go first to the Western world first, to make this kind of simple. Sequels exist for the sole reason of making money. I know people and directors will say, oh, I want to bring out more stuff to the studios, I want to bring out more stuff to people, that they love the content, etc. And partially that is true, of course. From any writer, slash director, slash artistic, you know, persuasion and vision you want to make a sequel because if you something you created is loved by a whole bunch of people you want to make something else that they could fall in love with too right it makes sense i mean like look at harry potter look at stuff like that you know people love that because they see one thing they love it they watch the next one and the next one etc now the thing is though is that in the western world we also do it for the wrong reasons a lot of times anime is made to facilitate, or I am, excuse me, movies and media are made to facilitate the concept of let's make some more money, let's go off that cash grab, let's f roll with the train, you know, the money train is going, let's keep going with it, right? And that makes sense, hey, as a studio, it costs money to make stuff, you know, like, my, my best example is something in the cheaper realm in terms of, like, movies that made a whole bunch of sequels. Paranormal Activity. Paranormal Activity is one of the biggest horror movies probably out there. It cost very little to make. It was one of the cheaper movies to be made. I think it only cost, like, a hundred grand to film the whole thing or something like that around that. People can correct me if they want uh, in the description box below. But regardless, it was a very cheap made movie the thing was those it had a lot of special effects that were done very well despite its low budget that people loved in the movie it became this huge call for, uh, following and then it became like this huge explosion of people loving this movie to the point that it made millions upon millions in terms of ad revenue and revenue from everything in the world of movies to the point that they decided hey let's make a sequel and they made another one, and then another one, and then another one, and another one. And you know what's funny? All those movies, you look at the ratings, they go down and down. It doesn't go back up, it goes just straight down, like a freaking train. Uh, like a roller coaster, excuse me, no, trains, trains should not go down, that'd be kind of scary. Uh, but like a roller coaster, it goes straight down in terms of sales, in terms of people liking it review-wise. But the thing is, is that, here's the thing, you made so much money off the first one, and then all the other ones are being made the same way it's making money like even though it might not be being doing very well in the reviews and all that it's still making money now let's go back to the anime world and kind of focus on that with the announcement of Code Geass you know people are up in arms about many things people are super happy they're like oh my god Code Geass season 3 I'm happy about Code Geass season 3 to be honest but you know people are super erratic about this they're like oh my god I love it oh my god why the fuck are they doing this etc and the thing is is that we have to ask ourselves is this a risk is it a double-edged sword what is this that code gas coming out is is gonna bring to us as fans now in the anime world you have to understand that it's the same concept as the Western world and why I even mentioned the Western concepts is that anime needs money to facilitate you know everything in anime is expensive you have the studios that make it you have that, that they have to pay their individual people that are, do art that do the voice acting of course they do the ad revenue stuff all that stuff has to be paid so anime is very expensive it's not a cheap thing to make Thus, when a series like, for example, Sword Art Online, that's probably one of the best examples I could think of right off the top of my head. Sword Art Online is a huge, huge thing. You know, there are a lot of things for it in terms of light novels, manga, video games, etc. And it makes a lot of money. Now, the thing with it is that, you know, the first season came out and people love the first season. You know, they have issues with the second half of the first season, but people generally love the first season. Then the second season comes around, and you know, Gun Sword Art Online 2, where we have Gun Gale Online, and then we kind of return back to Alfenheim and all that, etc. But people had mixed opinions about Gun Gale Online. I mean, this was a big thing when Sword Art came out, you know, Sword Art 2 came out, where it's like, oh, what happened to my fantasy sword swinging Kirito? You know, he became this guy with, ne uh, with a gun and a, and a 
laser sword. What what the hell happened? And you know, some people loved it. Some people went like, oh, I love the cyberpunk, steampunk technology stuff. I love that. I love the military aspects of the show now. I love how it like kind of changed the game and all of it. You know, people had a lot of mixed reactions with it. So what it ends up doing is it ends up making new fans for it and then also kind of losing some of the fans. Now, this happens in almost anything that comes out with sequels. I mean, you can just go around and look for anime that has a whole bunch of sequels to it. And the thing is, like, you know, for example, my I think one of my best examples of a sequel being better than the first, like the original one, and in many ways, despite it still having issues, it's still a lot better, is Naruto. Naruto Shippuden came out, you know, after many years, and of course, people had a lot of mixed reactions with it, but overall, people liked it a lot more because it became more serious, it was a little darker tone, it, it felt like it aged with the audience. This is something where it's a sequel that was done right, because people love it more so than the first season, and it not only kind of pushed more fans towards it, but kept a lot of the fans from leaving. You know, they went, oh, this is pretty cool, and it still has the characters you love, it has all the stuff you like about it, etc. Now, a show, for example, that's on this opposite spectrum where it pushed a lot of fans away was Eureka 7 AO. I, I talked about this in the podcast, so I know some of you who are watching this now might be kind of annoyed by, by that me talking about this again, but it's kind of point, like, I need to talk about it. AO, in many ways, was a travesty. You know, Eureka 7 came out, it was 50 episodes, and people loved it. And then AO came out, and people were like, oh, cool, Eureka 7, I don't know why they're doing a sequel, but let's, let's watch it, you know, I want to see what's going on. And it didn't do very well. Review-wise, it was poorer. Uh, in terms of money, they ran out of money very fast. They actually had to drop the show from being 50 episodes originally planned to be to 25. So thus, they had to speed up the story, speed up the character growth, etc. The show went downhill. I mean, the animation still was very top-notch for it. it. It still had, you know, some great music, of course, and some very good voice acting, but everything else about it was a train wreck. And the problem with that is that... You know, that pushed a lot of fans away and pissed people off in general. And you don't want to do that. Like, I think anime already kind of has a shaky foundation in many ways because people want to see good sequels. They don't want to see sequels that are made just to make money. You know, it's a shonen concept where a lot of times a lot of people will hate shonen because of the fact that they do a lot of filler because they know they're making money off that filler. Now... You know, with Code Geass on the you know horizon, this is kind of where I'm going with the Code Geass thing. Like I said before, I wanted to make it so it wasn't the sole focus of this video, so it's not like just, oh, he's doing it for views or something like that. I'm doing this because I want to talk about this right now. Code Geass Season 3 is coming out, and people are definitely already up in, in this kind of hizzy of either really loving it or hating it. I think I said this before in my beginning part of my video, I'm not 100% sure, but it was definitely something of an announcement that people that shook the anime community for a little while because Code Geass, as many of you know, was done by Sunrise. It was done way back in like 2008, I think 2007. It was an original IP. It spawned a whole bunch of things in its own right, plushies, toys, video games, etc. And the thing was is that Sunrise has not really been in the, I think, sunshine for a long time. Like, not to sound really stupid and kind of put Sunrise and Sunshine together, but it, it hasn't been in the limelight, if that's a better way of putting it. You know, Sunrise hasn't been doing per se bad, it's just that with a lot of their stuff, they haven't really been hitting the same success notes as Code Geass. Code Geass essentially was their diamond, and everything else to follow so far has been a mixture of like lead, silver, and gold in various directions and stuff like that. So, that's why, you know, I have to wonder that, are they going to do this for the right reasons? Code Geass Season 3 is going to come out, and I hope to God that it's being done because it's not just Sunrise hoping that they can rekindle the fire under, you know, the fans originally from the beginning. Because, as a lot of you will know, a lot of people have feelings that this ending of Code Geass, the first season, was great. You know, it was perfect, it had no issues, or excuse me, of the second season, excuse me. But, you know, with Code Geass now coming out again, it's like, why? What are they going to do with it? You know, what's going to happen? Are we going to have, a, like, a time skip in terms of... What's happening after? Is it going to show new characters? Where, where are we going with this? And a lot of people are scared about that. You know, I'm scared about that in, my sense, in the senses of who's doing it. Like Animation Studio, hopefully it's still Sunrise. Hopefully it's the same the original team that's doing it. Hopefully the same voice actors, etc. Because I want to see that done in its roots of how it was made originally, if that makes sense. Now, overall, you know, sequels, I think, can be something that is very beneficial. It can be a boon to anything anime or even just any form of medium in general because what it does for people is it lets them love their stuff even further you know you can watch and play games and see sequels come out non-stop and you go yeah more more of the content i love but the thing is, is with any great content 
making a whole bunch of things for it pisses some people off. And the thing is, is that a lot of times studios are doing this for money, which is, like I said before, is understandable, but it will tick people off. And I hope to God that Code Geass, when it comes out, it's being done for the right reasons. I want to see a good story presented. I want to see characters that I've come to grow with and, and love in the show in general. I want to see them come back better than ever. I want the show to be done in the way that the first season was done in, in excellence. And I'm not saying it's going to be have to, it's not going to have to be perfect. It probably won't be perfect, but I want it to be done in a way that I think everyone at the end of the day can say, you know what? I'm glad they did a sequel for this because I want to see a good sequel for it. I think that it's about time. And you know what? It brings back a lot of fans from the original one. It also adds new fans because people will go, oh, you know what? Since that's coming out, maybe I'll sh go check out the first season or the second season or the movies, etc. Because I want to kind of just see what everyone thinks the hype about. You know, what's the, what's the hype for this and all that. Anyways, before I lose my voice, because as you can see, I talked for a long time without stopping at this one. I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, please, if you do, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video. You know the whole nine. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great, blessed day, everyone. Bye-bye.